Hello everyone, this is Carrie with Everwood Creations. Today, we are going to be looking at creating chamfers on your CNC using your Vetric VCarve Pro software. A chamfer is a technique that woodworkers use to create a slope on an edge instead of a hard right angle. In this video, I will show you two different methods of creating chamfers using your CNC with VCarve Pro or greater. As you can see, I'm still using version 9 of the software for this video. Everything we're doing should be possible in VCarve Pro or Aspire. The first method is also possible in VCarve Desktop, but as of right now, Desktop doesn't allow the use of gadgets, which play a part in the second method I'll be showing you today. First, let's create a new file. I'm going to do a thickness of 3 quarter inches because that's the thickness we typically use. The first method of creating a chamfer is pretty straightforward, but has some limitations. Using your V-bit, you can create a toolpath that traces the edge of a shape while only engaging half of the bit on the material you intend to keep. Let me show you what I mean. First, I want to grab a shape to use as an outline. Over here, we have the clip art tab, and these are all clip arts that came with the software. I really like that they included all the 2D vectors. There's some really great shapes in here for lots of different uses. I'll just scroll down until I find the one I want. Then drag it onto your screen like so. Back to the drawing tab, we're going to change the size of the vector to something we can work with. I'm going to make some copies for illustration purposes later. Now back in the drawing panel, we are going to use the offset function. With the vector selected, hit the offset button. And you'll see a little menu. Now you need to decide where you want your chamfer to begin. If you do not want to lose material in the top part of the vector, you need to offset outwards by a distance equal to the material thickness. This will make the final size of your piece bigger. If you want the bottom of your piece to be the exact size of the vector, then you're going to offset inwards. Again, the distance should be the same as your material thickness. Otherwise, you can split the difference and offset both using a distance of half your material thickness. Now we'll highlight the vectors, excluding the middle vector on the one where we split the difference, and we will go and make a toolpath. In the toolpath menu, we want to select V-carve. A very important thing to look for is that flap depth is either unchecked or set to your full material thickness. Set your tool to your V-bit and use the feeds and speeds appropriate for your machine. Now we're going to preview that so we can see the difference in the chamfers we have created. As you can see, the direction of the offset matters a lot. Here's also where you can see the biggest limitation of this method. We have a lot of wasted material no matter what direction we chose. Thicker material such as this uses a lot of space because we can only use the angle of the V-bit to create the chamfer. Now, let's look at the same technique used on quarter inch material. These bevels work quite well here and have a nice polished look. For many projects, especially ones on thinner stock, this method is quick and easy and can give you that beveled look you're going for. But this method might not be your best choice on thicker materials like I had before. So now let's explore a better option for thicker material, which allows for more precision using the chamfer gadget. If you've never used gadgets before, the first thing you're going to want to do is open the gadgets menu. If you go to About Gadgets, you'll get this nice little instructional page. And there's a section called Downloading and Using Gadgets that will explain everything you need to know to get your gadget installed. Once you have it downloaded, there's an Install New Gadget feature in the same menu. It's very simple. Now I'm going to get rid of these extra vectors. We won't need them using the gadget. Once you've successfully installed the chamfer gadget, it should appear in the gadget menu. I'm going to use the three vectors like I did before so you can see the versatility when using the gadget. So with the vector selected, go to the gadgets menu and select chamfer. This will pop up the chamfer toolpath menu. 
Now we have different ways that we can customize this toolpath based on our specific needs. It lets you determine what depth to start the chamfer at. That would be called start depth here. How deep it cuts in, which is going to be cut depth, and the angle it will use to create the slope right here. Let's start by doing a 45 degree angle. I'm going to call it chamfer 45. Here you can select your tool. I'm going to use my smallest ball nose. It allows you to choose the tool you would like to use to create your chamfer. You can use either a ball nose or flat end mills. Though to get a truly smooth slope, you're going to want to use a ball nose. The flat end mill gives more of a stair step look. Let me show you what I mean. So I switch the tool to an end mill. I'll pop an EM on the file name so that I know which toolpath this is, because you are actually creating a toolpath here. And now if we preview the selected toolpath, you can see that it kind of creates tiny little stair steps. Maybe your project can use a stair step effect, which makes this perfect. Or if all you have is an end mill, you could do this and sand it smooth, but that's a lot of extra work. So what we're going to do instead is do the exact same chamfer path, only we're going to select ball nose as our tool. Here you can see it creates a much smoother look. So that's a 45 degree chamfer going from the top of the material all the way to the bottom. Now one of the easiest ways to customize this is to go ahead and change your angle. Let's say we want to change our angle to 67 degrees. And we're still going to cut all the way through the material. See, it doesn't take near as far to get there. Let's preview that. And you see we have very different outcome from our 45 degree versus our 67 degree. And this gadget really allows you to customize how steep you want that chamfer to be. The other real neat thing about this gadget is that you can also tell it where to start cutting. So if you've already carved out some material, you can change the start depth to match. You can also change the cut depth. So let's say we want a chamfer, but we don't want it to slope all the way down. So we're going to go ahead and do a cut depth of a quarter of an inch, and let's keep it at a 67 degree angle. Now let's preview that. And you can see that it has created that beveled edge, but it hasn't cut all the way through the material. It's only cut a quarter of an inch down, like we instructed but it still gives you that nice little rounded edge, which is what we are looking for. Now, if this was all you were carving, you would treat it just like any other toolpath, saving it with the Save Toolpath button and choosing your post-processor, just like normal. All right, that's it. Two different methods for creating chamfers using your CNC. I hope this has helped you see the potential of using your machine to create nice finishing touches. If you have any questions or suggestions for other techniques you'd like to see, leave us a comment below. And until next time, have fun and stay safe in the shop.